late night sketch comedy show has ebbed and flowed in its popularity. <laughs> but many of its performers have proved timeless. What's all this fuss I keep hearing about violins on television? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Saturday Night Live cast members. All right, now's the time in the show when I like to give Denise a call and hang up on her. For this list, we're looking at the best and most well-rounded performers from the show's history and are ranking them solely on the work they did on the Studio 8H stage. Well, this is some weird, wild stuff. I did not know that, but what about these people? Whoa, 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 whoa. Number 10, John Belushi. Right now, I've got this drunken Irish junkie who wants to kill me because of what I said about his mother being in terminal dreamland, you know? Belushi brought a raw energy to SNL that's hard to come by. He'd rather have more office space. He's probably never seen the rock yet. He probably never saw Grimm's fairy tales or tried out that fun. He's got <laughs> With every sketch he did, he was able to grab the audience's attention and make them laugh hysterically with his brazen, animated charm and often crude humor. Even though he was only on the show for a short time, Belushi produced many memorable characters and sketches, including the Olympia Cafe, Samurai Futaba, and the Blues Brothers with his friend Dan Aykroyd. His charisma and brand of slapstick hasn't yet been recreated. Imagine grappling with a 400-pound wilderness heckler. Opening for Jerry Vale was never like this. <laughs> okay, Bear, you can sit down. We've all seen the coat before. Fine. Real good. Okay. Number nine, Gilda Radner. Hi, I'm Gilda Radner. And, uh, <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> Radner was the first performer cast as one of Lorne Michaels' inaugural group of not ready for primetime players. And it's easy to see why Michaels would want her. Mom, I know the facts of life. You know, I got an A in health. She was genuinely funny and brought her characters like Roseanne Rosanna Dana to life. Dear Roseanne Rosanna Dana, last Thursday I quit smoking. Now, I'm depressed, I gained weight, my face broke out, I'm nauseous, I'm constipated, my feet swelled, my gums are bleeding, my sinuses are clogged, I got heartburn, I'm cranky, and I have gas. Winning an Emmy Award for her work on the show, Radner helped pioneer the celebrity impressions that have made SNL what it is today by lampooning legends like Patti Smith, Baby's hair, eyes, lips so thick. Lucille Ball, Does that mean I'm fired? and Barbara Walters. Or should we say, Baba Wawa? Good evening, and welcome to Not For Ladies Only. I'm Barbara Wawa, and tonight we'll be talking to an actual living legend. Number eight, Dana Carvey. You people don't quit now, do you? Now, is this the way we're gonna play the game here? Are you guys gonna keep asking these asinine questions till you see some dirty pictures? Is that, is that what you want? As a performer, Carvey could turn on the wow factor and was instrumental in renewing SNL status as must-see TV. A man who, who has a friend is a rich man, and that's what Clarence said, and by golly, he was right. When the show was struggling, he was a breath of fresh air, with characters like Garth of Wayne's World fame. Who's James Bond gonna spy on? The Guatemalans? <laughs> as if. Hans and Franz. I'm sure Arnold is not threatened. And the church lady. Could it be Satan? But, Dana was not a one-trick pony. He did spot-on impressions of just about anyone, including both George Bush Sr. and Ross Perot, which resulted in an interesting three-way debate with Phil Hartman as Clinton and the expansion of SNL's political satire. Well, let me just sum up. On track, stay the course, a thousand points of light. Stay the course. Mm -hmm. Number seven. Dan Aykroyd. Yes, our records were lost when the craft which brought us from France plunged into Lake Michigan. We crawled from the bottom of the lake and lived by night for years off our remaining protocaps. Aykroyd was a renaissance man on SNL's first four seasons. Uh, some of those moves you do, I wouldn't think the human body would be capable of moving like that. They were terrific, Nick, really. Intense, intelligent, and irreverent. He was the youngest cast member of his era, but also the most well-rounded. He could write perfect characters and perform them flawlessly. 
in addition to inventing bizarre but hilarious standalone sketches. Yes, fish eaters, the days of troublesome scaling, cutting, and gutting are over because Super Bassomatic 76 is the tool that lets you use the whole bass with no fish waste without scaling, cutting, or gutting. Among his many contributions to the show were the Blues Brothers with his friend Belushi, the Coneheads. I am a driving instructor. Mm -hmm. And uh, where do you folks come from? France. And two wild and crazy guys. We are two wild and crazy guys. As well as his time behind the weekend update desk. Jane, you ignorant slut. But who can forget his Julia Child? I cut the dickens out of my finger. Well, I'm glad in a way this happened. You know, accidents do happen. Time to time in the kitchen. Number six, Phil Hartman. You don't know what sense it is, Junior. Sense it is getting dropped by Columbia because Mitch Miller doesn't like the way your career is going. It's having million dollar pipes and nowhere to play them. Am I right, Stephen Eady? Known as the glue, Hartman was the kind of performer that always did more than was expected of him. With the smoothest voice and a cache of impressions in his repertoire, he seemed more mature than his contemporaries. However, he was often undervalued for his contributions. Tonight I'm gonna let myself shine through. Yes, they're gonna see the real Phil Hartman tonight. I wouldn't do that, Phil. Okay. Even so, it's easy to see that his support often saved a sketch. In addition to excelling in his own skits and portraying more than 70 characters over eight seasons, he always helped his fellow castmates. Bachelorette number one, what is your idea of the perfect date? First of all, I would push you to the ground. <laughs> Pee on you, chanting, house on fire, house on fire, put it out, put it out. And his Bill Clinton was spot on. All right, boys. <laughs> Let's stop in here for a second. I'm a little parched from the jog. Uh, sir, we've only been jogging for three blocks. Judy, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, maybe you're still a little too nervous. Mm-mm, I'm -mm, just kidding. Number five, Kristen Wiig. Well, maybe, you know, you could come back another time. I'm fine. Besides, I can't come back another time because I'm too busy. Just kidding, I'm not busy. Busy, just kidding, I am. But I make time for you. Just kidding, I don't know how to make time. Just kidding, but I know how to make pies. Just kidding, I don't. Just kidding, I do. And I'll make one right now. Proving herself as one of the most vital female performers in the show's history, Wig was a versatile, try anything once kind of gal. I better suck a little off the top. Oh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes glamorous, sometimes over the top, and often awkward. Roles like the female a-hole and Dunise showed her range. I put worms in my bed and slept in my bed and put a squirrel in my bed and mustard in my bed and then I ate them all. Is that bad? Yes, that is bad. She had a knack for annoying, absurd characters like Penelope. Well, that cat was like a child to her. My cat was my child. I was pregnant with my cat. <laughs> Gilly and the target lady. Uh-oh, dear. What? That's impossible. I'm pulling your leg. It's a proud! But she was also capable of celebrity impressions too numerous to name. Listen, my sweet dearies, I'm going to say something that I have never said before, and it is not, I love the smell of a man. It was easy to see that her castmates enjoyed working with her, too, as evidenced by recurring skits like Garth and Cat. One and a two. And come on, come on, come on, come on, come, on, come make a left, make a right. And go oh, off the interstate, baby. <laughs> Number four, Mike Myers. He was the kind of guy viewers just wanted to hang out with. I'm hypoglycemic and hyperactive. <laughs> I'm a hyper hypo. <laughs> That's why I wear a helmet. Whether he was portraying metalhead Wayne Campbell alongside Dana Carvey's Garth. I'm sorry, I know it's your mom, but I'm afraid she's a babe. Schwing. Or the coffee talk lady Linda Richmond. Welcome to Coffee Talk. I'm your host, Linda Richmond. Or Simon, the little boy who draws in the tub. Okay, this is a drawing of my daddy at the roulette table. <laughs> Look, he's crying. He's shouting for people to give him more credit. Myers exuded a crazy, fun attitude. But some of his best work came when he played against his goofy nature as Dieter Sprocket, the no-nonsense talk show host from West Germany. Now's the time on Sprocket's Family Dogs! Oh. 
Creative, adaptable, and skilled at accents, Myers was a definite asset to the early 90s SNL cast. That was fascinating, but the rest of the story will have to wait because that's all the time we have! Number three, Eddie Murphy. It's one hell of a day in my neighborhood. A hell of a day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? <laughs> After joining the show once the original cast members moved on to greener pastures, Murphy had big shoes to fill. And he did it with a smile on his face, a spring in his step, and a load of impressions in his arsenal. Sometime I made me break out in a cold sweat. One, two, three, four. His antics brought viewers sketches like Gumby. Imagine him telling me where I can park and where I cannot park. I am Gumby, damn it! Mr. Robinson. Oh, look! An eviction notice! And Buckwheat, a character so popular, Murphy requested he be killed so he could play other roles. Hey, Mr. Wheat! Yeah! <laughs> Buckwheat was buried today in the entire world mourned. The lone bright spot in the show's dark ages, Murphy reinvigorated SNL by cultivating his brand of wacky, high-energy humor. Everybody, let's do it! Everybody, up there too, come on! Everyone stand up, come on! Stand up before I smack someone! Number two, Chris Farley. Now you kids are probably asking yourselves, hey Matt, how can we get back on the right track? With Farley, viewers never knew what to expect. For the love of God, let the boy move in with you! Sure, his behavior was often erratic because of his drug use, but there was something remarkably funny and, dare we say, touching about his character sketches. At the very end of the song, uh, it was, the song it goes, uh, and in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. He, you remember that? <laughs> yes. Uh, is that true? Trying to bring the same quality of work to the screen as his idol John Belushi, Farley was willing to go anywhere and do anything for a laugh. You're drinking Colombian decaf coffee crystals. What? You son of a bitch! You no good damn son of a bitch! Whether he was caricaturing himself as a horrible interviewer on his fictitious talk show, playing an aspiring Chippendales dancer, or a sassy lunch lady, Farley was one of a kind. Everybody gets enough food down here in the magical. A long lady lamb. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Well, folks, if you love seeing huge people in suits with thousands of buttons, you're in the right place. This is the sound a doggy makes. <laughs> Mr. Connery. Moo. <laughs> No. Well, that's the sound your mother made last night. This is the word, it's the word that you heard. Chess has moved, chess has feeling. Anyway, the bouncer is a king size lesbian who looks like Phil Jackson. <laughs> and the password is Scotty! <laughs> Number one, Will Farrell. When a professional gets his mitts on a song, that's when it really takes off. Da, da, de, da, da, ba, da, ba, da. From day one, it was clear Will was there to dominate. What? What is it? What? Oh, man! Oh, man! Oh, it was hot in there! After a slew of popular cast members left or were fired in the early 90s, Farrell arrived with many other new faces to shake things up. And shake them up, he did. Charles <laughs> Nelson Riley, I am not alone in thinking that you make Gandhi look like a child pornographer. His versatile, average Joe looks and attitude allowed him to play any character they threw his way. From George W. Bush... Making the tough decisions, 24-7. That's 24 hours a week. To Alex Trebek... Come on, that is way out of line. To Steve Butabi. <laughs> 
Plus, his all-or-nothing approach to performing earned him many fans and solidified his place as the most cowbell-worthy SNL star ever. Do you agree with our list? Which SNL performer was your favorite? Yeah, I farted. Jealous. For more comedic top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. There's a guy named Fred and he's got a pair of slacks. Ooh, Fred's got slacks.